Affinity Photo has added with version two, a mesh warp tool. It's had deform and other distortion effects, but this time you can distort using a mesh warp. It's destructive as well as non-destructive. You can do it via the layer menu as well. So let's just undo at this point. So cancel. So you've got an image, got a layer here. You can go over here to the toolbox and you can see an option here, mesh warp tool. You can use that. Personally, I generally use the filters and go down to distort and mesh warp. It's just below the equations. That was in version one. That was the last one. Now it's mesh warp tool. So select that and you get this border. And you can just use that if you want. Don't have to use anything else. You can just simply warp it by just dragging like that. Just go on that edge. Because if you go in the center and just drag, it doesn't work. It doesn't work unless you add a mesh. And what you can do at any point, you can double click. You double click along this line. So just double click and it will add this line. You don't need to do that. You can undo and you can double click here. And then it will add a line from top to bottom and from left to right. And you can then go here. You still can't click anywhere in the center here and move without double clicking. So double click again if you want to add, just add another mesh point there. And you can then move that. And you'll notice you've got these points here and you can just drag that so you can warp it even more. Just like you can click here and just drag the whole area or you can just tweak and distort it there. You can also convert between the two. So you don't have to use that. You can use it smooth or sharp. And you can see the result there. And you can select those and just drag. Now, unfortunately, you can't select these points, two or three of them. You can select two points, two mesh points, and then you can drag and you can see you do that. If you want to, you can select say three. You can just drag that, obviously you can create even greater distortions that way. But then of course you can't really, you can still manipulate that, but you can't manipulate all of these points. That would be nice. If you could turn that around and they would all turn around equally. Hmm, that would be good. However, got a lot of great features here. And you can create some really wonderful distortions. And you can see the sort of design you can create. And once you're happy with it, just click apply. And that's it, you've got your distortion. Unfortunately, there is no layer and fade, which is odd, because quite a lot of the other deformed ones, you can, or distortions, but there's no fade here. But you can use repeat mesh warp, which is really nice. So you've got the same layer, or maybe a different layer selected. Just go to repeat mesh warp, and you can warp it again. Of course, it's gonna use exactly the same warp as before and you can see the result of that. So you can create some very unusual warping just by going back and repeating it and repeating it. Probably add a macro up and create that. Might be useful. So I'm just undo that. What you can also do, let's just go now instead of that one, let's just go here to mesh warp tool, just to show you, as soon as you select it, it's exactly the same as the filter command. And you can distort it, but you've also got an option here of source. You can synchronize between the two. Personally, I don't like the source, because if you do this, you warp it, it's fine. But it's sort of like hit and miss, I think. Maybe you might have different experiences. You might think, you know what, that's so much easier. You can distort it, again, do exactly the same. You can add some additional points and you can manipulate that, but you still not seeing the end result. I don't know if there's a way of doing that. I wish there was. There's no preview feature. I'm not certain why they didn't add a preview feature, but there isn't. So once you're happy with that, click apply, and then you get your distortion. And that sometimes the result can be quite amazing, but it's just a bit, I don't know what I'm gonna get. But you can see, you can use this filter and distort and mesh warp, and you can use it with other things. Obviously I'm using it with an image, but you could use it with, I'm certain other, let's just go and create something else. That is probably the best thing instead of saying you can, let's just go here and select, say, an ellipse. So ellipse, then go to filters and down to distort and mesh warp. And you can see what happens. An assistant will kick in and it will convert it to you. 
and for you and that's to a pixel layer so it's a pixel layer now which you may or may not want you can't then manipulate it at gradients particularly but you've got your design so you can warp your shape like that that's quite handy and again do exactly the same before double click and you can drag and distort it of course you can have a gradient or something in that image or maybe a pattern design or it may be a photo itself because you could use that as well so cancel again let's just remove that maybe create a selection so elliptical marquee tool let's just select part of an area there or oh, from center i don't want that that's why i did that strange hmm. that's an unusual default Control c Control v so i've got a layer so with this layer what i can do let's select and deselect i can distort that as well another thing filters go down to distort and mesh warp and of course distort that warp it in all kinds of different ways do exactly the same as before and then click apply and you can do the same as before just select that gain filters distort and mesh warp you can use source again very tricky to use because you just apply it like that <laughs> you can't see what you're doing which is very odd but it's i'm certain it's very effective for some but say you do something like that click apply and you can see the result of it it actually keeps it in the border as well which is really gives a very weird looking design but still of interest and of course exactly the same as before you can always say filter repeat mesh warp and you can create some quite extreme colorful band designs i suppose gradient designs like this and of course you could use it with type as well i will be doing videos on that let's just go to this image now obviously i've distorted it but what i can do you can also now go to layer and new layer filter layer and i will be doing other videos on this because there's of course lots of other ways of combining it with layers masking etc but again you've got mesh warp here as well so mesh warp and you can see now if you go over to the layers panel here's the layers panel in window now they've moved it they've moved it to the window far more sensible i think here basically because everyone's used to it being in the window menu from obviously other applications they put it there and they've still got studio there what's in studio oh well, that would be all the other presets okay that's sensible to keep it it's called studio but they've moved it from the view menu so you've got that and you can expand out and you can see now you've got your live effect so you can remove it you can turn around and say oh just delete it don't want it or undo and of course you can always double click the actual effect not that because that will rename it not me not very helpful but double click here just this little icon here which is actually i think very nicely done and very sensible In many ways it would be nice if it when you hover over there if it would say double click to edit it just says mesh warp which is not very much use since it says mesh warp there so it would be nice to actually have the option saying double click it to edit the effect but once you've got that you can see you've got exactly this again and it's destination not source which is strange anyway you distort it and you can go there and you can really create some really weird distortions and of course you're done click done again and you're back there and of course you can go and edit it again if you want so double click there and you can say oh i don't want it that extreme maybe just like that done again and so on and the thing is also i'm certain you can of course blend it with you've got layer effects just a layer so you could use obviously effects as well so you can run through and you can see the result of that which is quite some interest actually that's an interesting point it's actually slightly different because it doesn't come with a dialogue that is odd most of the various tools live effects come with a dialogue that will have the blending mode within it this one doesn't or opacity so the only way you can do it is just go up here and change the blending mode here so again that's what i was looking for i was thinking that's very strange but it does mean you can do this like screen so then you can get the blend with the original which is really quite nice that's i think that's quite a very good feature still overlay go for a difference yeah 
rays, you've got all the standard ones. They haven't changed that, haven't updated that. Actually, I'm quite surprised that they haven't updated that. That's another thing that maybe they could have added a few more additional blending modes. But that's a run through of the mesh warp feature, a really great new feature of Affinity Photo version two. I'm certain there's even more to discover and how to use it. Hope you found this of interest. Please leave some comments. Anything about the thing, will you be using this? How will you find the features? Do you, will you use it with text? Will you use it with images? Will you use it with shapes? Will you use it in combination with other live effects as well? Will you use it with the course, just in the destructive mode or non-destructive mode? Will you use it with masks? Whole range of different possibility with this tool. Thank you, bye.